Hey, welcome to Drumroll. I have with me a member of one of the top chamber groups in Australia, the Flinders Quartet. They've been performing for 20 years now all around Australia, as well as overseas. They've performed in the UK, Singapore, Canada, and up in Scandinavia. The Flinders Quartet have regularly commissioned new works from Australian composers over the years. And what's really interesting is that they have their own composer development program where they choose a small group of promising composers and then they workshop each piece with the composer to give them the opportunity to work with professional musicians. Such wonderful mentoring. I'd like to welcome the cellist from Flinders Quartet, Zoe Knighton. Hello, Annabelle. Hello, thank you for joining me today. I know it's your 20th anniversary this year, but I'm, I'm assuming your season is very different from what you expected it to be. Yeah, we had a number of celebrations all meticulously planned. And, you know, as of March this year, we've just been into, in constant rescheduling mode. So it's very different to what we had imagined. Yes, you, you're normally doing a fair bit of touring and things, aren't you? We asked, you know, we had a number of festival engagements that we were going to be doing and a lot of touring planned, which have course has all been postponed or or cancelled along with everybody else in the country and the world for that matter. Yes very very unusual times. Now you've got a very special concert that's coming up as a digital concert which is great that means all of us around the world can enjoy it and I understand it's with the composer Katie Abbott. Do you want to tell us how this whole concert came around? Well, Katie and I have been friends for a number of years and we've been workshopping ideas for how Flinders Quartet might be able to work with her and as part of her Australia Council Fellowship um, which she was awarded she had the idea of expanding her Hidden Thoughts project. So Hidden Thoughts 1 which has already been written and premiered involved Katie surveying um, people for their for their hidden thoughts. You know what, what are things that they haven't told anybody before and then she um, put that into to song and so this version of Hidden Thoughts, Hidden Thoughts 2 involved some other some other thoughts that had previously been hidden and unheard in the letters that Julian Burnside encouraged Australians to write to asylum seekers in Nauru in 2013. Australians wrote messages of welcome and um, messages of hope and they were all returned to Julian and they sat in a box for years and Katie knew of the story of these letters and when she mentioned it to me I said well they'll be in Julian's shed. And Julian just happens to be the chair of our board, so we oh. had access to them. Nobody had read them, you're saying? Nobody had read them before, and Katie was the first one to have that opportunity to, to open all of those letters. Wow. Um, and I think she stopped somewhere in between four and 500. Oh. She, so, she stopped, but there were over 2,000. Oh. And so we, we've looked through the boxes and there's still, you know, reams of them that are still unopened. So there's another project in there, I think. Like a message in a bottle, isn't it, really? I mean, there's something more than poetic, but there is something really quite heart-wrenching about the fact that people have um, opened their hearts and that their words haven't been read or, or heard. And that not one person has read them. As a comparison to something like social media where people are just spitting out all sorts of flippant things like what they had for dinner or whatever, and somebody always reads it. And then, like you're saying, as a comparison, these words are so well thought out and handwritten and then to have them not read by anybody is, is a crime. It's a crime. <laughs> What's really interesting, Annabelle, I'm glad that you used those words, you know, that people have been saying what they had for dinner. One of my favourite movements from Return to Sender is tell me what you ate for lunch. <laughs> and, it, and so, um, and what this person is, you know, in an effort to finding some kind of common ground. And I think that's one of the things that Katie has done so well with this piece. It's heart wrenching in parts, but she's also balanced that with a good amount of humour and, um, you know, that old self effacing wit that Australians are known for. So we look at how performers around the world are coping or not coping at the moment as well. When you've had starving artists for decades, for centuries, doing what they are passionate about. I know I'm get, getting off on a bit of a tangent here, but they've been looked down upon, I think, by people who have always had a job and then don't actually know what it feels like to live hand to mouth from one day to the next. And now suddenly you've got so many other people that are unemployed. It's become a bit more normal and that there's, there's more compassion, I think, where people have suddenly experienced what artists have been experiencing for a very long time. 
Well, look, and and that's certainly true, Annabelle. There's um two things that have really emerged out of this time. And through the Melbourne Digital Concert Hall, out of the $24 ticket price, $20 goes directly to the artists. And I know that a lot of people take great comfort in the fact that they can provide some kind of practical help for artists and musicians as we you know need to eat and pay the rent just like everybody else the other element i think from this time which is it's not a new idea but you know artists are the ones that we rely upon when things do get tough and we're the bunch that sort of almost provide the emotional voice of the time to be able to provide people the opportunity to directly be a part of it in their lounge room and actually know that their ticket price really goes towards supporting the artist and for us we're donating 50 percent of the profits to the asylum seeker resource center Oh, wow. That's a wonderful thing to do. That's great. I think this transparency that we're seeing at the moment, I'm hoping that that will become something that's more regular and that you see more often because people are going to be a lot more willing to give where that transparency is shown and they know where their money is going. It's not just being taken out by the middleman you know, I mean, I don't, not that I call a theatre a middleman, the theatre does need support as well. And I'm, I'm hoping they'll be able to find a way of incorporating that in their ticket price to look after themselves in the end as well. So you did mention Melbourne Digital Concert Hall just before, and we've had a couple of those on this channel already. But um, I think it's a, just a fantastic idea. Do you want to just explain that a little further for those who haven't heard about it? Most often they'll have two concerts an evening, Thursday, Friday, Saturday evening, sometimes on a Sunday as well, I think. And I know that for the concerts, I've watched a number of concerts and had the pleasure of watching them with my children, for whom sometimes it's a little bit more stressful taking them to a concert because I'm conscious that they'll ask questions or that they might wriggle a little bit too much. So, um, <laughs> they always yeah. just think mine would want a bread roll in the middle of the concert. <laughs> 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 Why don't they sell them? <laughs> Why don't they sell bread rolls? <laughs> and this is one of the wonderful things is that my, my children have been able to watch the concerts that I've wanted to watch. I can share these concerts with them. Not only that, I get to be able to support my friends and colleagues and to be a part of this wonderful music. But um, the Melbourne Digital Concert Hall, you buy a ticket online, you set it up on your device or you might even like to stream it onto your television. Mm. Um, and you can sit there in your slippers and a glass of wine and enjoy a live concert. It is fantastic. It's a great idea. So tell us a little bit more about the music in the concert that Katie Abbott has done. So this piece of music is written for string quartet, narrator and mezzo-soprano. And we have the wonderful Dimity Shepherd, mezzo-soprano, and Richard Piper playing the narrator. The members of the quartet, we also get to talk throughout the piece and we get to sort of say some of these words that were written in the letters. It's nearly an hour long. Throughout that hour, never once, I think, will the listeners be bored musically. You know, I think that Ishii's always presenting something new and innovative at the same time as this music being incredibly approachable on a first listening i think it will have a real emotional effect how lovely that sounds great so is this the premiere of this work it is it is the absolute world premiere online and hopefully we'll have people watching from all around the world yes um one of the exciting things about this digital concert hall is that we've realized that we have the chance to reach a far greater audience than before there is no capacity for this concert hall. Yeah. we're really hoping that um some of those two thousand people that wrote the letters might be able to experience this well this is the interesting thing about this whole event is that it's opened up so many different opportunities and different ways of reaching people and hopefully we can keep hold of that let's not just go back to just theater i mean the live experience is fantastic but if we can reach a whole lot of people that could never have got to that theater I really hope that we can keep something of, of that going on in the future as well. So this concert is coming up on Thursday, 23rd of July at 7 p.m. Melbourne, Australia time. That's Greenwich Mean Time plus 10. If you're looking for the time zone, you can work it out. It's about an hour. The tickets are 24 Australian dollars and the show is called Return to Sender. And you'll be able to find it here. I'm putting up the link for you at the Melbourne Digital Concert Hall and you'll be able to go and buy your tickets there. And if you want to keep in touch with Flinders Quartet and see what else is coming up with them, you can go and have a look at their website, which is flindersquartet.com. Thank you so much for joining me today, Zoe. Oh, look, thank you for this wonderful conversation, Annabelle.